Uh, g'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel for this round 14 edition of my weekly tips video. It's gonna get tougher from here on out with the next four rounds being condensed into like, what, three weeks? It's gonna be harder to smash these videos out consistently, but I will be doing my best. As we race towards this final series, I will be endeavoring to smash out the content as much as possible as we get to the business end of the season. You may have seen we did a podcast recently, True Footy Podcast 59, where we talk about the asterisk Asterisk, not an X, I did fix that. Butcher and I have a little heated debate for the first time on the channel as well, so go check that out. And bear in mind, we will be doing another podcast, the 60th podcast, this coming Sunday as well. So by all means, leave us some questions either in Discord or leave it in the comment section of this video and we'll get to it if we have time. Speaking of the podcast, guys, be aware that our promotion with Manscaped does come to an end at the end of August. So that means you have about just a matter of days even to get your discounted products. Remember the code has changed. If you saw it in the podcast, the discount code has changed from TrueFooty to TrueFooty20, all caps, all one word. I will leave the details for that. In the description of the video, you get 20% off their products and free shipping. And if you were gonna get that sort of stuff anyway, you'd be really helping out the channel. As always guys, before we get into the tips, let's do a couple shout outs for the people winning our fantasy and tipping comps. So we'll start with fantasy. We have a new leader, Harrison Hyde, AKA Hazard11 who I think is leading the competition for the first time this year with a monstrous 1846 on the weekend. And his average score is now 1687, which puts him two points ahead of last week's leader. So well done, Harrison. Now, it was a sick round of tipping for just about everyone. It looks like almost everyone got eight or nine in like the top 40 or so. I scored a perfect nine myself and I still only finished 19th for the round. The person who scored the best margin this weekend was Julian, who scored a perfect nine, of course, with a margin of just 16. Not to be confused with Julian, who is winning the overall competition with a score of 86 and a margin of 430. He is two points clear of second place. I must admit, I am slightly gutted that my score of a perfect nine only moved me up from 43rd to 42nd, but, I'm gonna be making a late charge. Here I come, starting today, and let's get into round 14. So as always do, let's have a quick look at the ladder. You've got that familiar top five there, Port Adelaide, Brisbane, Geelong, West Coast, and Richmond, who are, in my opinion, a gap ahead of the next bunch of teams in St. Kilda, Collingwood, Western Bulldogs, and then a glut between Melbourne, Carlton, and GWS in 11th spot, clutching desperately to their finals hopes. Below that, you've got Essendon who have slumped to 12th with some bad injury luck and some bad form. Fremantle jump up to 13th. Gold Coast, Hawthorne, Sydney, North Melbourne, and Adelaide are the bottom five. So the first game of the round is between fierce rivals Hawthorne and Essendon at Adelaide Oval, and that's nice. I don't know why they're playing at Adelaide, but it is a great stadium for what should be a fairly evenly matched game. It's hard to say that on paper. I think Essendon this year have been a lot better. Um, Hawthorne have had a lot of injuries as well, but neither of these sides are playing hot footy at the moment. Last week, the Hawks obviously went to, well, they played in Adelaide against the Power and went down by 10 points. Unlucky not to win, but equally, Port were pretty inaccurate, so hard to know what to take from that. Um, even still, they, they played a little bit better against West Coast the week before that as well, and they're slowly improving, but again, they're a long way off the pace this year. And Essendon kind of took it up to Richmond in the Dreamtime game. Last weekend, only going down by a couple of goals. Uh, that is a pretty solid you know, result against a team that is, as far as I'm concerned, as good a chance to win the flag as any this year. Like I alluded to before, Essendon have had some bad injury luck this year, but to be seeing 12th at 5, 6, and 1 and a percentage of 86 does show that they're not playing the sort of footy we know we're capable of. That being said, I just feel like... Oh, Oh, it's a tough one. Both This is a real, almost a 50-50 for me, but I'm going to say the Bombers just keep in touch with the top eight and get a win by, I don't know, two goals. Ah, next, day, next up is a game very close to my heart, Richmond and the Eagles. This was the teams I wanted to play in the grand final at the start of the year, and it's still not looking like that far removed from reality. Uh, Richmond, as far as I'm concerned, are much better suited 
to Queensland conditions than the Eagles, and that's what makes me nervous about this game. Obviously, the Eagles won eight on the bounce, and um, playing some good footy, kind of dropped off in that last quarter against the Giants. It's hard to know whether they were sort of players were sort of mentally backing off because they knew, you know, the, we've got this run of five games in 19 days coming up. Um, it's hard to say. This is a crucial game. We will be live streaming it as well on the True Footy YouTube channel. So get around that if you're available at 5 p.m. Perth time, 7 p.m. Queensland time on Thursday night. If this was Perth and you could guarantee good conditions, I'd be backing West Coast on form at the moment. But because it's going to be greasy and you've got Elliot Yo out, who's easily the biggest contested midfielder for the Eagles. I think Richmond's much better suited to this ground ball heavy style. Nat Nui is a big factor. I'm going to have to go conservative here. I, I think the Tigers are more likely to win this game than the Eagles. So I'm going to tip them by 14 points in a big clash. Next up, this next game has upset potential. The Bulldogs are playing some reasonable footy at the moment. Just coming off what was almost like a mini final against Melbourne. Loser of that game was I wouldn't say killed off their finals hopes, but it is a devastating blow when every win counts at this point of the season. Again, a hard team to pick on, you know, consistency of form because frankly there isn't any. But I think since that Brisbane game, the Bulldogs have played with a pretty good intensity and obviously they lost that game against a good side. But I think they go into this rearing hot and ready to go against Geelong, who, as far as I'm concerned, are the best team in the competition right now. I've seen enough to be convinced that right now they are the best team, whether or not that means they're going to win the flag. Probably, it, it probably doesn't actually, it's probably not actually a good sign because, you know, the team that looks best four weeks out from finals rarely wins the flag, but they are looking as imposing and it's infallible as any team in the comp right now. So on paper, I'm thinking Geelong definitely. I do... I do sense an upset with this. I think the Bulldogs have a little happy knack of beating Geelong in recent years, even when the Dogs haven't been going so well. But I'm going to tip with my head here and say Geelong win that by 20 points. Port Adelaide then take on Sydney, and this is a timely clash for the power. They've just kind of been running out of steam since they beat Richmond, and that often happens when teams have a good, almost finals-like win. It's hard for them to get up in the weeks after. You see it constantly, and that's what happened. They got pumped by Geelong by like 10 goals or something the day after, or the week after they beat Richmond, and then were kind of unconvincing against the Hawks, albeit, as I said before, they kicked something like 9 goals, 14, could have won the game by more. But I think coming up against Sydney, who travelled to Perth last week and put up you know, a terrible score, what was it, 2 goals, 7, 19, clearly a rebuilding side, maybe just running out of steam as well. And of course, having to you know travel from Perth to Adelaide is a bit of a, a burden on them as well. Like I said, this has come probably at a timely time for Port Adelaide. They get to freshen up, rest their legs a little bit, They're playing home two weeks in a row against two what is currently bottom four sides on my screen right now. I think the Power will win, and I think they will win fairly comfortably by four goals. Next up is an interesting one, Fremantle versus GWS. I'm really liking what I'm seeing from Fremantle this season. I think what we're seeing from them is a real improvement in that young layer. you got, in particular, Brayshaw and Cherub. We do talk about them a lot, but I really think you're starting to see the fruits of the you know the development that Fremantle's put in the last couple of years while all their players have been injured, basically. And I do think, I've got a sneaky feeling, Fremantle are going to be outsiders to play finals next year. I don't think they're in the frame this year. Even 5-7 and seven is not a bad record. Um, but we've seen what they can do to good teams. It's just about evening it up. And I think with better injury luck next year, they're a shot. But I think on current form, they're playing with good momentum. But they're also coming against a GWS side with everything to play for at 6-6. Six and six. And let's face it, GWS on paper are just a much better team than Fremantle. I don't think that's too controversial to say. Having uh, obviously made the grand final last year and they've got one of the most star-studded lineups out of anyone. This is the time to get their shit together. And I thought they actually took it up to West Coast fairly well in Perth last week. Uh, of course, not traveling. They're going to be in Perth for that whole uh, six or seven days or whatever it is. We saw through flashes, they looked like a decent side when Jeremy McGovern wasn't picking them apart in the air. I think they outscored the Eagles by four goals in that last quarter. Again, was that because the Eagles dropped off? Like, you know, definitely partially, but I do wonder if that's going to give them momentum. Look, I think GWS are good enough to win this game by, say, 22 points, but I think it would actually be a reasonable standard game. Ooh, Melbourne versus St. Kilda at Trigger Park, which I believe is Alice Springs. Melbourne again coming up against a side 
at, I wouldn't say similar level. I think St. Kilda have proven themselves to be a level elevated above Melbourne this year, but this is kind of still an almost finals-like game between a side that's playing or currently in sixth and then Melbourne who's still trying to cram into that top eight. It's a really, really important clash for the Ds. And we saw what happened last week when they played a mini-final. They did not rise to the occasion. I tipped the dogs to beat them last week, and I got shout on in the comments, but it is nice to get one right every now and then. Let's face it, my record this year hasn't been great. Melbourne are typically an inconsistent team. You look at their last five. They've had three 50-point wins, one of them against Collingwood, and then a five-goal loss, and then a 50-point loss against Port. So that just shows how up and down they've been this year. It makes me reluctant to tip them against the Saints, who, to their credit, other than one horrific performance against the Cats, where they lost by 10 goals, They've been fairly steady this year, and it was only a couple of weeks ago they flogged Essendon, another side around this sort of level, as far as I'm concerned. Last week, they didn't quite get the chocolates against the Lions. Maybe unlucky not to win. They were coming hard at the end. Giggity. That being said, I don't think the Lions fully brought that intensity we've seen from them in previous weeks. I do wonder if some of these contenders are getting a little bit fatigued at this time of the year. Personally, I think as an aside, this is a good time to have a little bit of a slump. So that does bode well, I think, actually. Um, Look, I'm rambling here. I think St. Kilda have proven themselves to be the better side this year. Can Melbourne come out and beat them? Of course they can, but I am going to go conservative again. I'm feeling conservative this week. week. I'm going to say the Saints win by 10 points. uh, It's a big game, that one. If Melbourne win that, that really throws the... The top eight calculations, it makes it very interesting. Oh, Carlton versus Collingwood at the Gabba. This is a tough one, Carlton. With a full head of steam after that massive win in Perth against the Dockers, really came out. And I would say surprised me a little with the the way they beat the Gold Coast. You know, the Gold Coast haven't really been smashed too much this year. And it's fair to say the Blues really walked all over them. The trajectory the Blues are on at the moment, while not really, as far as I'm concerned, I'm not really convinced they're in the frame for finals, although now I look at it, if they win this game, they'd be higher than GWS, so maybe that's unfair to say. This is a huge clash, I guess, for the rivalry stakes as well, but both of these sides are in the frame, pushing for that 7th and 8th spot. It's ridiculous how, you know, Collingwood are, I want to say, underachieving, but I've talked about their adversity in previous videos. What I think happened last week was against North, I thought they were playing all right, they got challenged early, they sort of overcame that. It started playing well. And I think what happened at the end where they started break through and actually started to hit the scoreboard really built that confidence. I'm big on confidence with teams um, and momentum going into games. I think it's an underrated factor. And I do think maybe, and they've started to get some players back, Collingwood might be over the worst of their adversity and their troubles. And I think this might be the week we see them play back into form. It's going to be a great game. These two sides are fairly evenly matched on current form. Well, actually, Carlton have been definitely better in the last month. But I'm going to say Collingwood hang on to their finals chances. They break the Blues' hearts, and they're going to win this by 12 points. Next up is, I think, the second last game of the round, Gold Coast versus North Melbourne. Not exactly a headline clash. Gold Coast, again, kind of running out of steam, similar to how they did last year. It was... Maybe a month or two ago, we were talking about them as almost, you know, not final certainties, but good chance to make finals. And here they sit 4, 8, and 1 after, was it the Saints they lost, they drew with? Was it the Saints? No, it was Essendon. They currently sit 14th and, you know, maybe just starting to get a little bit fatigued. They are still a young list. And I know the season's shorter this year and, you know, the quarters are shorter. But, of course, like any other team at the moment, they're still duress on them i think of like obviously with the games being compressed into such a short period of time they're probably feeling the pinch of that as well after such a good start the performance against carlton was pretty disappointing against the side who was similar to them on the ladder at the time and um now we're starting to really see them separate away from those teams ahead of them north melbourne i've played some improved football took it up to the the pies last week as i did say you look at these two teams past five matches and there's one win between the two sides, and that was when North trounced Adelaide. So not a whole lot of compelling form going into this one. I do think North probably been playing the better foot in the last few weeks. But Gold Coast, of course, playing at home, it's a tough one. I think I'm going to say it's a close one, but the Suns just break North hearts with a, I'm going to say three point. I think that could be the closest game I've tipped this year. 
Actually, that is it. There you go. I thought it was the second last game of the round, but it was the final game of the round with just eight games this year. Two teams having the bye. And we look at the top of the ladder, Port Adelaide, and now Geelong are second on the ladder with a percentage of 139%. Again, as far as I'm concerned, the best team in the comp, and that percentage does reflect that. And, you know, they're playing in a hub. It's ridiculous effort. Brisbane a third. Richmond fourth with their win over West Coast, who slipped down to fifth, although still have a game in hand, along with Brisbane, who I think had the bye this week. I think that's why they dropped down. St. Kilda, Collingwood. And now GWS are in that top eight. So the two teams that I thought would be playing this year's grand final sit seventh and eighth. And it's a weird year, so, you know, anything can happen from here. But, um, yeah, looking a fair way off those top teams, I mentioned the Bulldogs are now 9th, Essendon up to 10th, Melbourne, Carlson, Gold Coast, and Fremantle kind of make up that next glut of teams who are starting to maybe slip out of contention a little bit. Maybe it's a little early for Essendon and Melbourne. Uh, and then you got Hawthorne, Sydney, North Melbourne, and Adelaide in that bottom four, and it still shocks me to see Hawthorne there at 4 and 9 uh, and 83%. That has probably been one of the more surprising performances this year. That's it, guys. Thank you for tuning into this tips video. Let me know in the comments what you think about this week's games. Make sure you check out the podcasts on the weekend coming and also the previous podcast. And again, don't forget to check out manscaped.com for 20% off using the code TRUEFOOTY20. Thanks, guys. I'll see you on the live stream on Thursday. Cheers.